For singing till his heaven fills, tis love of earth that he instills, and ever winging up and up, our valley is his golden cup, and he the wine which overflows to lift us with him as he goes. So Vaughan Williams was inspired to write The Lark Ascending um, as a result of a poem by George Meredith. And of course this piece has now become a hugely popular, much loved core part of the violin repertoire. You often hear it played on Classic FM and of course now the piece itself is more famous than the poem which inspired it. Vaughan Williams started this piece in 1914 but it wasn't first performed until 1920 so Maybe the context of this music isn't just the English countryside and birds singing, but in fact um, the First World War. And you hear that in the lamenting quality of the music, um, a lost generation perhaps. So the Lark Ascending is a very special and original composition. The violinist gets to play this beautiful cadenza at the, both the opening and the end of the piece where one can be totally free and I think it has to sound improvisatory. And of course the violin represents the lark climbing up into the stratosphere uh, in hopefully a very beautiful way. And it's terribly exposed, so it is it's quite a lonely piece to perform. Um, there's nowhere to hide at all. Um, but that's, I think that's part of what makes it so special and unique. And then when the orchestra eventually comes in, or in this instance it's going to be a, a string section, um, uh, you know, suddenly that sound that sounds so rich compared to the very stark, bare sound of the solo violin. So I've been asked to play the Lark Ascending on many different occasions. Um, I've played it at a wedding, I've played it at a funeral, I've played it in Sherburn Abbey, um, and then I've played it in an urban church where it's amazing in the final bit that should be so magical and make you think purely of the countryside. There was a Chinook circling overhead, um, which I must say I found quite funny, <laughs> but it wasn't totally ideal, I suppose. And then I've played it in beautiful um, rural churches, um, for example, in the Cotswolds in Chipping Camden. Um, where you literally do hear birdsong outside as the piece is going on, which of course is very special and how it should be, better than a Chinook. Um, and so it's a piece that seems to touch people, you know, people... Isn't, isn't that incredible that music can be appropriate for both a wedding and a funeral? I think that sort of says a lot about the fact that it speaks to human beings in many different ways and that it's, that it's touching, that it's poignant, that it matters. So when I was about to play the Lark Ascending in Chip and Camden, um, a lovely man came up and he said, I'm afraid I simply don't like this piece. And if I had a shotgun, I would try and shoot the damn thing. <laughs> Meaning the lark, of course. So I told him, well, just give me a chance. Let me see if I can win you over. And I couldn't believe it. He afterwards said he was completely won over. And I think what that shows is that this piece is, is only goes so far on the radio. It's, it's about hearing it live, it's about all the kind of natural harmonics that ring on in a church um, and that will be perfect in St Martin in the Fields. So you might think, oh I've heard the Lark Ascending on the radio, but honestly you haven't unless you've heard it live. Mm -hmm. 